I'm just going to tilt this a little bit. And of course, my favorite, the upside down armless running man. Yeah, I'm really bad at this. Welcome back guys to another edition of Looted, the unshaved edition. Yes, I did forget to shave this morning. Please excuse the scruffiness. Today we are taking a journey to the stars and checking out uh, the Homestar Original Home Planetarium by Sega Toys. Now I feel like I have to say this every video, but this is not a sponsorship. They just sent us this so we can check it out. And I'm quite excited by this one because one of my favorite things to do in the winter is go stargazing. Now I know nothing about constellations and I can only name two and that's the plow and Orion's belt. And it'd be quite nice to be able to do stargazing in the comfort of my own home without having to freeze to death. So that's where this thing comes in handy. So it actually looks like a fairly significant piece of kit. So on the front here, it says it can project 60,000 stars. That sounds pretty impressive if you ask me. But then again, I've never used one of these things before. This is a first experience for me. Also, if you turn this around and on the back, you've got a few extra stats right there. So the light source is an ultra bright 3 watt white LED and you can project onto pretty much any flat surface. The recommended projection distance is between 150 to 230 centimeters and it is capable of making a projection up to 270 centimeters big, which is pretty good. So now that's all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get out of the box and see what it looks like. So first things first, we've got the discs which you put into the projector. So we've got the Northern Hemisphere with constellations and the Northern Hemisphere without constellations. We've then got the instructions and in here, is the projector itself anything else in here I should care about? Nope. Here it is. Is that a lens cap? Wait, wait, wait. What's this? What's this? Yep, that's the lens cap. So here is the projector and I quite like the look of it. I really like the spherical design. It kind of reminds me of Hal and I'm actually not sure if that's a good thing or not. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It might try to kill me. So let's go ahead and have a quick rundown and see what is actually on this thing. So on the bottom here, you've got all your buttons. On and off button there, you've then got your shooting star button, which is quite interesting. Then you've got your move button because this thing can rotate. And then finally to set this up, you've got your disc tray here. So you just take one of the discs, plop it on there, throw it in and you're pretty much ready to go. So it's a really simple setup. And then on the top here, you've got your focus wheel so you can make sure the stars are all nice and sharp. Now the guys at Sega Toys are also nice enough to send us some extra discs. The day side of the earth and moon and the night side of the earth and moon. So we're gonna be trying those out later, but let's go ahead and start with the ones that came in the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and try out the Northern Hemisphere with constellations because I think that's gonna be more interesting to see. So we're just gonna open a case there and it's a fairly substantial case the plastic around it is pretty basic but then it's got a foam padding there so the discs are pretty protected so let's take that out and just hold it up to the light and that looks like it's going to be pretty detailed i know you guys can't say anything but trust me it looks pretty good so simple setup just put the disc onto the tray there slide it in but first things first you need to give this thing power and it comes with a european plug there but luckily it also comes with converter to our far superior British plugs. So because we're going to be pointing this at the wall, we need to adjust the angles. So you've got your little levers here, which you can rotate and that just loosens it up. So as you can see, it's pretty free flowing there. So you can just point it in the direction you want then tighten these things up. So then you're pretty much set up and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead, pull this background up. So we have a white background and get this thing pointed at the wall and see how well it works. Please reveal the dirty wall. Yeah, we really need to give this thing a repaint. And I think there will just about do it. So we're gonna turn off the lights and try this thing out. So now we're plunged into darkness. Let's give this a go. One, two, three. Wow, that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> that is actually quite a sharp, bright looking picture. I didn't know what I was going to expect. Honestly, when I saw the super bright free watt LED, I was a bit skeptical, but this looks pretty good. Now we've got about a meter and a half away from the wall. So I'm just gonna move it back and see if it changes much, but no, it's actually staying pretty consistent when it comes to brightness and sharpness. Look at that. You've got all your classic constellations on there like Crab Horse, possibly Orion's Belt, the Lasso of Truth. I'm just going to tilt this a little bit. And of course, my favorite, the Upside Down Armless Running Man. Yeah, I'm really bad at this. 
And right down the center there, you can see the Milky Way. And I'm not sure how well it's picking up on camera, but believe me when I say there is a lot of stars to be looking at here. There's a lot of little details, which look really nice. One thing I would like to see is a disc which comes with the constellations names next to each constellation. So I could actually learn the name of them. Because as you can tell, I have no idea what half of these are called. In fact, well, actually way more than half, but you get my point. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a few other modes on this planetarium, which are gonna try out now. So if you just go over here, there's a shooting star star mode so let's just give that a go not seeing any shooting stars let's just give it a minute shooting stars don't happen every second after all okay so i've just checked the manual which is something i should have done to begin with i apologize to get the shooting stars working you need to go ahead and turn on the rotating mode so if we just click that on there that starts the rotations and it's very very subtle oh there it goes shooting star did you see that you see that on tape then? I'm just taking some time to take it all in and I think this is actually a really nice little planetarium. I like the subtle details. I like the shooting star going through the middle of the frame. That's just really nice. And the rotation just gives it a slight bit of movement to make it seem a little more real. All in all, it's just quite relaxing. This would make for a really nice bedside light so you could shine it up on the ceiling and just watch the stars as you drift off to sleep. What more can I say about it? Let's go ahead and try out another disc. So we just saw the constellations of the Northern Hemisphere. So let's try out one of the extra ones they sent us. So we've got the day side of the Earth and Moon and the night side of the Earth and Moon. And I'm thinking we start with day. I kind of want to try them both out because I think they're both going to be really cool. Judging from first looks, this one looks like it's going to have quite a lot of detail and some color. So I'm eager to see how this one looks. Let's check out that little blue dot in the solar system. That looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so impressed by this little thing. I didn't think the output was going to be good enough, but this actually works really well. You can see quite a lot of detail on the Earth there, including clouds. You can kind of see the atmosphere and the sides, the moon. You can check out the craters. Man, that just looks really cool. Let's go ahead and get some shooting star action in on this. So let's turn on rotation. It's going to look like an asteroid heading straight for Earth, and it might actually give me a bit of anxiety. <sighs> oh, near hit. Earth nearly destroyed. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and bring the projector in a little closer and see if we can get all the details in a smaller space so you guys can see everything there. That's the best we can do right here. And that, that's looking pretty good. Nice and sharp. You can see the Earth and all the thousands of stars sitting around it. The only downside I can think of for this thing is that it's starting to make me feel a bit sleepy. I think I can get away with changing the discs in the dark. So let's just pull it out. Pop in the Earth and Moon at nighttime disc. So let's just slide that in there and bam. There's even more stars on this one. You can see most of the Milky Way in this one. That's so good. I like the fact that you can even see the street lights on the globe. That's so cool. I can see the UK there emitting its fair share of light pollution. There's a load of detail on the moon to be had there. This is this is great, man. This is my favorite slide so far. Just seeing that much Milky Way as well just makes this really good. This is a really good one. And I think we've pretty much gone through everything there is to be done with this planetarium. So let's go ahead, turn the lights back on and get our final thoughts on the product and wrap up this video. So my final thoughts on the Homestar original home planetarium. It's a nice piece of kit. It's really small. It could easily live on your bedside table. It's super relaxing. You can just stare at the stars while you're in bed. And that just sounds great if you ask me. It also has the potential to be a great learning tool. I'd be interested to see what other slides that Sega Toys make for this thing. Like if they actually have a disc with the name of the constellations on it, I would really like that. It'd be good to actually learn which constellations I'm looking at. And you could even get really nice detailed close-up shots of the moon, Mars, and loads of other planets in the galaxy. I would really like to see some nebula that would be really cool to check out on this. So yeah, overall, I'm impressed by this little thing. And if you guys want to check this out, I've put a link down in the description below so you can get some more details on it. And with that, I think that's going to be it for another edition of Looted. If you like this video, hit like. If you really like it, hit subscribe. We've got more videos on the way. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We put channel updates and behind the scene content on there. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Seriously, this thing does look like hell. How can you not look into that eye and not feel a slight bit of terror?